Hey all, it's Mike here. Some have asked me to start a series on syntax searching in Logos Bible software, so this is the first video of this series. There are usually three primary reasons why someone says they're interested in syntax searching, or at least think they're interested in running syntax searches. These include, one, they want to find when a word is the subject or object of a sentence and the verses where these occur. Two, they want to find a word when it's used in relationship to a particular preposition or prepositional phrase. Or three, they want to discover the relationship between the main verb of a sentence and the words that serve as subject or object of that same sentence. In this video, we're going to look at easy yet effective ways that we can solve all three of these questions without needing to dive further into more complex syntactical query building. For many of you, you can watch this one video and never worry about the syntax searching again. However, some of you may still be hungry for more. There will be more videos released after this one to cover the more complex needs, but for now, this is a great place to get started. Most of the syntactical information that users of Logos are interested in finding is available in a simple Bible word study guide. For this video, we're going to be looking at one example in Hebrew and another example in Greek. Let's begin with Hebrew. So let's open our preferred Bible to Genesis 15.4. Uh, I'm going to open the English Standard Version. Here we read, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. So we're all real familiar with these verses in the book of Genesis. Verse 6 says that Abram believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Let's say we want to find all of the other places in the Old Testament where the Hebrew word aman occurs. And not only that, but also find the other places, if any, where God is the object of this Hebrew lemma as it is in Genesis 15.6. We can easily find this information by running a Bible word study on this Hebrew lemma, Amon. To do this, right-click on the word believe, and in the context menu, select the option for lemma on the right, and then Bible word study on the left. In the newly opened Bible Word Study, go down to the Clause Participants section. This section can be organized by both semantic role as well as grammatical role. To keep things simple, let's organize by grammatical role in the top right corner since these are the categories that most will be familiar with. This section is organized first by the primary grammatical role and secondarily by the person or thing serving that role. If we go to the section for object, we can find all of the people and things that serve as the direct object of the Hebrew verb Amon. If we expand the section, we will see Genesis 15.6 along with other verses in the Hebrew Old Testament where the person of God serves as the role of object of this verb. Notice that quite a few of these instances refer to Israel's unbelief as opposed to their belief in God. If we look at the section titled Prepositions, we can see the places in the Hebrew Old Testament where this verbal idea is part of a prepositional phrase. This is not only organized by particular preposition, but is also listed in a cool graphical chart that represents each preposition's meaning. Notice that with this one Bible word study, we were able to answer all three primary reasons that most people want to run a syntax search. We discovered subject and object, relationship to prepositions, as well as the relationship between words and the main verb. This same process can be accomplished for any word in the Hebrew Old Testament or the Greek New Testament by running a Bible word study. Let's try this same process, only this time in the Greek New Testament. Let's turn our Bible now to Romans 1, 16-17. Here we read in the ESV, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Now right-click on the word faith. 
we see from the context menu that the lemma here is the Greek word pistis. Click on lemma, then Bible word study. If we look at the clause participants section, and then organized by grammatical roles, we see here that this word is really only represented as a modifier or in relation to people and things. The reason for this is that the clause participants section is really fine-tuned for verbs, not nouns or adjectives. Instead, what we will want to do is add another section to our Bible word study that used to be there by default, but after the release of Logo 6, was made an extra section to be added later. Go up to the option for Add in the top right-hand corner. Click on that and then select Grammatical Relationships from the menu. This will add this section to the bottom of our Bible word study. If we look at this section, we will see that this section shows us when the noun serves the role of subject, object, etc. If you have not already, I would highly recommend that you create your own custom Bible word study that includes this section in it, so, so you do not have to add it every time to do a word study. It's very helpful to have available. The prepositions section of the Bible word study is especially insightful when looking at this Greek lemma. There are all kinds of debates concerning the meaning of prepositions when they're used in correspondence with this word pistis. Here in this section, you can find all the different prepositions when pistis is the object of the prepositional phrase. In fact, we can even quickly narrow down on a particular biblical author's usage of the word in prepositional phrases by going to the option that says all passages at the top of the Bible word study. If we were looking for Paul's usage, we could change this to Pauline epistles. Now all the sections in the Bible word study will only show Paul's usage of the word. I hope that this has been helpful to show how you can begin to access syntactically significant information simply by using the Bible word study. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below. If you want to know when the next videos from this series are released, you're going to need to hit that subscribe button. I would also love to know what you thought. Make sure to leave me a comment. As always, enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures. Until next time.